Good morning, Rangers. Welcome to Crotoni Entertainment. My name is Chris, and if today is Monday, that can only mean one thing. It's morphin' time. Today we're going to continue forward on the Zeo Ranger project. Uh, just a couple quick updates first. I did acquire a new mounting system for my camera, so future videos should look a little cleaner after the Zeo Ranger series. And I'm looking at a few microphone options as well. So hopefully after the Zeo Ranger series, we'll have some better looking videos with some better sound quality. So stick with me. Uh, we'll have some great videos down the road. But for today, let's go ahead and get started with Zeo Ranger 2, yellow. Let's get these other Zeo Rangers out of the way and begin. First thing we're going to do, as per usual, is we're going to look for majorly prominent mold lines. Remember, I am not a professional painter. Uh, this is not a display army. I'm not putting this up for an award. I'm just looking for absolutely major mold lines, typically run, ones that run down the side of the helmet, down the side of the legs, ones that would really make the paint look just very, very bad on the tabletop. I'm just going to go ahead and scrape those off with my exacto knife and get them out of my way. If you want to be more meticulous, you are certainly welcome to on your miniatures, uh, but I'm going to just do this fairly quickly just so we can get these models painted and move forward. So, after we go ahead and get the mold lines cleaned off, we're going to make sure we're ready for priming the miniatures. You see I got rid of a couple of big ones here and here. Uh, we're going to take this miniature outside. We're going to spray it down with our Rust-Oleum 2X Perfect Gray Spray. It's a spray that I'm just a big fan of for these Rangers. It sticks well to this plastic and it's worked pretty well for me. So we're going to take her out to the priming booth. And we're going to bring her back. She's going to look something like this. Now, this gray is also going to do a great job letting us pick out a lot more detail than the solid yellow plastic does, uh, as you can plainly see. And we're going to go ahead and start with our Citadel base of Averland Sunset. This is going to be our absolute base coat. We're going to cover the entire model in this. Well, not necessarily the entire model, but we're not worried about getting it onto the areas that are going to be white or gold or anything like that, uh, because the predominant color on this model is yellow. So we're just going to put this color on first. We're going to use it extremely uh, freely. We're going to put a lot of this on. So as I've mentioned previously, what I like to do, you always want to thin your paint just a little bit. I typically keep a palette on the side that has clean water in each of the pots. And I dip my brush in that clean water. And then I dip the wet brush into the paint. It's not the normal way people thin their paints. It's not the right way to thin their paints, generally speaking. But it's a way that works for me. So it's what I do. It helps me paint models fairly quickly. And again, we're not looking for a display tabletop uh, or a display professional standard. We're looking for a basic three-foot fabulous tabletop standard. Our miniatures are going to look great. We're going to be able to play our game. Now, while we're doing this, one of the things I love about uh, Tanya as a character, uh, both in the game and in the, in the Power Ranger show, uh, is, her, is her versatility and her uniqueness. Uh, she's really the first ranger in my mind uh, that we bring her into the show we see any real personality to develop out of. Uh, the first several episodes of the Zeo series, we get a lot of Tanya-centric Tanya stories showing her navigating her normal life outside of being a ranger. I just, I just think that's pretty cool. I think she got more characterization than Aisha did, and uh, even, unfortunately, Trini, which I was a big fan of Trini as a yellow ranger, but I think Tanya got much better characterization. Uh, in the game, however, Tanya is a uh, powerhouse beast of a damage dealer, as I'm sure you guys already know. Uh, the beautiful thing about her main mechanic is that add dice and take dice away sort of thing. She always rolls more dice than you would normally get on an attack, and then she's going to remove some of those dice. So what that's effectively going to do from a uh, from a strategic standpoint is that's going to make her consistent. It's going to make her highly consistent. She's going to roll more double hits, which she's going to turn into triple hits. She's going to roll more single hits, uh, and her misses are going to go away. So she's going to be a, a highly consistent damage dealer throughout the game, great at DPS, and her Zord ability allows other Rangers that really need to land the damage uh, to go ahead and land the damage as well. So people like uh, Hyperforce Pink, uh, who double the damage of their attacks, people like Mighty Morphin Black, who are going to spread some of the damage by picking the highest dice, uh, and even people like Zeo Ranger 3 Blue are going to be just made just made better by her presence, which is a, it's a fantastic thing when you have a Ranger that versatile. All right, so let's step back to the painting real quick. Uh, we've got our Averland Sunset done, and we're going to pull out our Citadel color, uh, Yandin Yellow. I'm sure I'm pronouncing that incorrectly. It's a contrast paint, and we're going to pull out our Technical Contrast Medium. This is going to let's thin this down a little bit. Uh, the Yandin Yellow is a very strong pigment. What we want to create here is some shading. So we're going to take the uh, Yandin Yellow, and we're going to take the Technical Medium here, and we're going to mix them together a little bit. I've been doing about a one-to-one -one ratio of the Contrast Medium and the Yandin Yellow. And we're just going to bring that in, and we're just going to paint over all of the yellow on this miniature. We're not going to be uh, you know, discreet. 
it's just going to go over everything. And you can see almost instantly that the shade is going to slip right down into the deepest recesses of this Ranger. Um, and it's going to kind of leave the upper areas more exposed. This is going to create a lot of well, contrast, which is the goal of a contrast paint. So when we're looking at this model from a distance, we're going to have a lot of those, you know, those grooves visible. It's going to look, you know, it's not going to look natural. It's going to look very cartoonish almost in a way, but it's going to look striking on the tabletop. Uh, I don't look for extreme uh, realism in my miniatures. I find that realism is too subtle for a look. So something a little more in your face uh, that's going to look really good from three feet away is, is, is the target here. So we've got just a couple minutes here. We'll get this all pushed through. We'll move into the next color. And while we're doing that, let's kind of go back to Tanya's adding dice and taking dice to be away mechanic that makes her so good. There's a general rule in wargaming that says the best way to achieve something is to either minimize or maximize your dice rolls. And what I mean by that, in a game like Warhammer 40k, you use a flamer because it negates the hit roll. You skip the hit roll entirely, go straight to rolling for damage. Or anything that would negate a save. Um, failing that ability, uh, which in this game would be something like uh, Zero Ranger Gold's Lightning Rod, um, that just that does an auto damage. Uh, failing that ability, however, you can't eliminate dice rolls. You want to roll as many dice as possible to give yourself the best chance uh, possible to roll the good results. So that means sometimes taking a model with uh, four or five attacks in other war games is way better than taking somebody with one attack that has higher damage. And that's true over here as well. The more dice we can roll, the more damage we're going to do, the more damage we're going to do, the faster we're going to kill monsters, and we'll win the game. So we're wrapping up on getting our, our contrast paint on here. We're going to go ahead and move on to the next step momentarily after that dries. It's going to take probably 10, 15 minutes at least to get the contrast to dry. It dries, it dries pretty quick. So we're going to move on here. See, we look around. We've got pretty good coverage. You can see kind of in the areas of the grooves where we've got that great shading. And we're ready to move on to our Vallejo game color, Amarillo Lunar or Moon Yellow, or Amarillo, I'm sorry, or Moon Yellow. We're going to put this on the highest points. We're going to leave these grooves here untouched. We want that darker color in there. One thing I have found working with this Moon Yellow is it is very, very thin right out of its container, so it took me about three coats to get this level of coverage. And as you can see, the miniature is actually still wet here. Um, a little further, I'm actually going to have to go back and touch it up again uh, because a couple of spots are going to go ahead and get a little, you know, taint on them from other paints. So we're going to have to clean that up as we go forward. But the color itself is beautiful. After multiple layers, the coverage is pretty good. Um, I absolutely love this shade. I think it's fantastic for a Yellow Ranger. It's like pulling teeth using it, but it's great. Let's move on to that Citadel base Retributor armor. This is going to go on to the gold areas of the Zeo Rangers. It's going to go in the belt. It's going to go in that chest area. It's going to go in the hem of the skirt. It's going to go around the gloves and the boots. I'm going to start with this Retributor gold to get our gold shaded up. So now we've got our gold uh, layered on there. Everything is now dry. So you see we're starting to get some color variation on our Ranger, even though gold on yellow is not the greatest variation. We're going to move into the lead belcher here, Citadel-based lead belcher, and the Citadel-based Mephiston red. The lead belcher is going to be for the Zeo laser pistol. Uh, it's also going to be for the power pod sword. And this Mephiston red is going to be for the laser pistol. And that the fang you saw there is going to be for the tip of the power pod sword. Because when I looked up some reference photos... Um, I saw that there was just a little dab of this bluish gray on there, and this Citadel Fang works perfectly on it. We've also got the silver up on the, the nunchucks there, but next we're going to pull into the Citadel Nolan Oil. It's going to create some shading for us uh, on those silver areas. So we apply it really quick here, uh, and you see it's completely changed the color of silver. We're going to bust out our Liberator Gold, Citadel Liberator Gold. This is going to be painted over the Retributor Armor, and it's going to create just a little bit of variation in the Retributor Armor for us. And we're going to go ahead and continue moving forward with our Zeo Ranger because now we're really starting to look pretty good. You'll notice it doesn't look quite right yet because there's some large areas that need to be covered that are really going to change the look of the miniature. To do those, we're going to start with the gray here. This is going to be the base for all the white areas on our miniature. It's going to give a nice, calm color for the white to go over and keep an even, smooth white look. So when we paint that on, you see we're starting to look a little bit more like the Zeo Rangers we know from the show. Just that one extra light color really changes the dynamic of the model. And then we're going to go ahead and layer over that with our Vallejo game color dead white. And we're going to zoom back in right after we put that on as well. And as we zip back into that there, we see we've got our Vallejo game color dead white on our miniature. Uh, there is actually a rim around the visors on all the Zeo Rangers of white. Um, that's a little hard to see. There's some nice texture sculpted on the boots of the Zeo Rangers that let us go ahead and give a, a surface to leave some of the gray visible to create some texture. We're going to slip into our, our Citadel base Abaddon Black and go back to our Moon Yellow. 
The Abaddon Black is going to be to paint the top of the base. The Moon Yellow is going to paint a ring around the base, just like we did with Zeo Ranger 1 Pink. But we're going to put the Averland Sunset over that ring before we use the Moon Yellow, because it's going to give a nice, clean surface for the uh, Moon Yellow to go over and make it look really good. As you can see, we've got our finished Zeo Ranger 2 Yellow. She's nothing fancy. She's just a good tabletop standard that's going to look good playing a game of Heroes of the Grid. Anyway, thank you all for watching. Uh, hit that bell notification for new videos. Like and subscribe. Look forward to more future videos from Morphin Monday. And pretty soon we'll be opening up videos on other days of the week for other games and just general gaming topics. Thanks for watching.